In today's show, we're going to talk about how to upload multiple files to Power Apps. What? And we're going to do it by dragging and dropping or multi selecting. What? That's right. We're going to do these things that you've been asking for for a long time. I finally worked it out, made it as easy as possible, and I'm going to share it with you. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're gonna upload multiple files in one pass to flow using Power Apps. I'm very excited for this. Oh yeah, we're gonna do drag and drop. Oh yeah, we're gonna do multi-select. This show is straight fire. That's why I got the fire extinguisher up there, right? And for those of you who don't like my enthusiasm, I'm sorry, I get excited about this type of stuff. But yeah, so what I did was I finally sat down and figured out how to do all these things. And what's interesting is I didn't just take the method of uploading a single file and like loop through that with a for all. We're actually going to send all the data over in one flow call and then have flow do the looping. So then that way to be more efficient and you know a lot better. And as a bonus, because of the way I'm doing this, if you guys are building offline apps, this will also work in an offline scenario because we're putting it all into a collection. Like this is a win, 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 win video. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm excited. I'll switch over to my desktop. I'll try to calm down and take a look. So the first thing I wanna do over here on the desktop is the simplest, right? So you can see I've made a very simple app to teach you guys how this works. We're gonna show some stuff as we go. But the most common one, right, is we're going to click on my attachment control here. And so you can just scroll down here and I've been using you know different pictures. Um, I don't know, let's grab Chewy's headshot. So I'm gonna click on Chewy's headshot. And then I can just hold down the control key and grab Chewy Sit and Theo and Harley and Roger and a bow tie, right? So I grabbed four files. So this is not totally new, right? You've always been able to do this with the attachment control. Just hold down the control key you can, or the shift key, right? Whatever way you want to multi-select, you can do that. And we say open, it is dropping them into that attachments library. Now, that's one way to get the files in, right? Kind of fun. The second way though, is we can drag and drop. Hang on, let me open up an Explorer. One sec. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull over regular Explorer, right? So I've got this open, I've got to open my desktop folder. And so in Windows Explorer, I'm just gonna highlight, add a line, four, six, seven, I don't know, those five files. I don't care what I grab. I'm gonna grab those five files, and I'm just gonna pull them over here. Look at this. You can drag and drop into the attachment control. So I, there's debate, this wasn't always here. I just don't know how long it's been here, but I discovered it this week. So <laughs> if it's been there for a long time, oops. But look, drag and drop, we drop the files in. So now we've got all of those files, right? We've got the different ones um, that we manually uploaded or that we used you know, by clicking on the add file. And then we've got the different pieces here. So I've got these six files here. And so now I wanna push those to SharePoint uh, so our SharePoint document library. So to do that, we're going to click on upload all. Now, before we do that, I want to kind of show you a little bit about how this is going to work to kind of get us going. So what I really am doing is this is outputted by attachments um, or attachment control dot attachments. And so I'm using that to feed into a gallery. So there's a gallery on the page. It's invisible, right? You don't need it to show up. Your users don't need to know it's here, but I want you guys to know it's here because you need it. But by passing all this to the gallery, I can pass all the image or all the files. They don't have to be images, right? So remember like um, we had a, whatever, let's here, let's just get rid of Chewy's headshot and let's add another, let's add one of those Excel files. And so even the Excel file goes through this process, right? And so with all those in here, we're now gonna press upload all and right, we'll see the little spinner. And so after a couple seconds, the upload is finished, and if we go over to my SharePoint document library and do a refresh, you're gonna see, right, so there's Roger and his bow tie, Theo and Harley, Chewy Sit, a different, oh, those are some old, hang on, let's just do another refresh, I refresh too fast, there we go, a different name, so all six of those files are right here. So, pretty cool, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through how all this works, but I guess I should show you the button. For those of you that don't wanna watch the whole video, I know how you are. Um, so if we look right here, we'll see that the upload all button, really what we're doing is we're using a collection and we're gonna explain how this logic works, but that's the code that does the hard part. Because I wanted to run one flow instead of, a lot of people say, all right, take a flow and for all, so of six things, we're made six flow calls, which consumes more resources, takes more time. So by packaging all this up into a collection, 
and shipping the collection to Power Automate with just the bare essentials it needs, which we'll look at, then you're able to do this. Now, so that's, that's what we're gonna explore. We're gonna understand more about how this works. Now, keep in mind, if you just wanna steal this app, you're like, I don't care, I just wanna download this app. Remember, you can go to training.powerapps911.com and go to the resource library, the curated library, whatever we're calling it this day. You'll see the one with the little YouTube thing. You can sign up there, and if you sign up for that um, uh, subscription, then you have the ability to download the working app and all the other working apps. So there are a lot of cool stuff out there. But we're gonna walk you through how to build this nonetheless. The other thing to keep in mind as we talk through this, you know, is if you don't understand how to upload a single file, so if you never watched the video, right, the video linking up there, to upload a single file, then this is gonna be a little bit deep for you, right? But if you go and watch that one, if you understand the upload a single process, because we're not gonna talk about all the basics again, then you're gonna be able to apply this concept. So watch that video first if you haven't seen it. Okay, so the first thing we did was we just threw an attachment control in here, um, and then I just kind of customized it. But, and by customizing, I mean, like I just went in here and said, all right, attachment control, like there is add attachment tax, text, right? So I just changed the text there. Like I didn't do anything special to it, but one difference from the previous video you watched on a single upload is there is now no longer any code in on add file because we can't have this automatically trigger anymore. In the single upload scenario, when they upload a file, on add file triggers and we ran the flow and we saved it. Here, if you attach three files at once, on add file runs three times, but it gets really confused and basically it'll upload the first one correctly and it'll mess up the rest. So that'll be a challenge. You also might have noticed when we were attaching files that it only let me attach so many. And so just remember that there is max, um, so there's max attachments. So it is set to six. I think you can set it up to 10. I haven't messed with the upper boundary of how many files you can do. So you guys feel free to play that, but there is a way to change that. And then there's also max, max attachment size. And so that is the maximum file size and that is in megabytes. So only up to a 10 meg file. I believe that you can increase that up to 50 megs. But what I don't know is if you tried to upload six 50 meg files, I'm guessing that would fall apart. I've not tried, like I said, I've not stretched the upper limits of this. So you guys are gonna need to do your own experimentation. Leave comments below with what you find like the upper boundaries are, because I'm certain there are upper boundaries, but I'm kind of showing you the two knobs that you can turn to control the number. Um, the other thing that I did here was I went in and so drop target background color. So I changed this to that really dark gray. That's what gave it that nice look, right? When I was dragging in there, like it made it real obvious what where I was, the drag target was. Um, and so there's a bunch of these different drop um, settings that you can mess with if you want to change it. Maybe make it blink red because your user's like, I can't figure out where to drop. You can change it for them. Okay, so the attachment control, nothing really to do with it. So second step, so that's first, you need attachment control. Second, and if you don't know where to get the attachment control, it's because you didn't watch the first video, so I'm not gonna tell you. So the second thing you need is the gallery. And so the gallery is a requirement. And what you're going to do with the gallery is you need to have the attachments control uh, dot attachments, right? So that's gonna be the item. So my attachment controls name dot attachments, that is the table of data of the attached records. Speaking of that, we need to attach a couple records to make this work. So let's just grab a couple of pictures over here. How about Chewy, uh, Chewy getting a haircut? Oh, nope, I did not mean to do that. Chewy haircut and Chewy giving me a kiss. Oh, how cute, what a nice dog. If I can learn to use this, boop, boop. There we go, open those two. Okay, and so the reason I didn't want Chewy's kiss, whatever, it's in there. So what I wanted here was for you guys to see um, that you have to configure this. So you're gonna need files in here to configure it. And all that you really have to configure, all the gallery really needs is an image control because we're gonna reference this image. So you notice this is image three. We're gonna reference that in a second. So you have to use a gallery and there has to be an image control in here, but you can make it real tiny. I mean, it doesn't matter because once again, what are we gonna do? Oh, well, I'm gonna break things. Um, remember that you, power apps, you're being dumb. Ugh, power apps. Anyway. What you're going to do is you just need this reference and you don't have to show this. So you can just set the visible to false, but it just needs to be over in the corner of your app, right? Because your users don't need to see it, but you need it for its logic. Because the real challenge is then gonna be over here in the upload all. 
So let's talk about what this does. So set var show loading to true, right? That just runs our spinner. That's what made the little spinny wheel while we were waiting. No big deal there. But so this collection, this is the thing where you have to really put your thinking cap on, okay? And so what I'm gonna do, remember when you're looking at a large one like this, always work from outside in. So we start with gallery one dot all items, not attachment control dot attachment, gallery one dot all items. And the reason we start there is because we need that image control to be referenceable. And the image control is referenceable via gallery one all items, right? If you highlight that, you would see down here, image three, the controls there, the files, all the things are there, okay? And so that is the first piece. So gallery one all items, and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna do an add column. So th remember this is a table, add columns adds another column to that table. So I'm gonna add a column called base 64, you can call it whatever you want, but I call it base 64. And then we're going to do this crazy shenanigan. Okay, so this with function. And so what this is doing is this is grabbing the, uh, whatever image is an image three dot image, right? So that's a different image on every screen or every thing. And it doesn't have to be an image. Remember this works just as well for a Word document as it did for a uh, file, an image, but we have to use the image control. So image three dot image, turn that into its binary data. So this little JSON function, and we talked about in the first video, makes the, um, the whole extract of it. So it's got the double quotes, data, blah, 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 comma, and then the base 64 double quotes. So that's what this output. So we use with to put that into this temporary variable called var demo from attachment control. Then we wrote this crazy shenanigan mid formula. And this mid formula is what knocked off the double quote, the header information all the way to the comma, right? So it got rid of all that. And then it got rid of the comma at the end. So you're left with just the base 64. We just need the raw base 64. No headers, no quotes, just the raw base 64. So it does that, it makes that base 64 and puts it in the column I named base 64. I'm so clever. And then to minimize the amount of data that we send from Power Apps to Power Automate, right, the stuff we actually send across the wire, I wanna make that as small as possible. I use show columns to say, hey, only show the column base 64 and name. That's why if we look at cold files, oh, I gotta press the button to get cold files. Well, I clear cold files, darn it. So if we run just this, let's just copy this out real quick and run it on a, a separate button so you can see what that does. Insert a button, paste that in. All right, this is what we're here for, we're here to learn. So let's just play, oh, put that over here, press the button. Okay, so that would make a collection called cold files. And so in there is the file name, in the raw base 64, that's it. Because that's all we need to create a file. If you wanted to send more information because you wanted to have a parent record or some metadata or something else that you're gonna use in your flow as you guys do more complex things, great, send more. But don't send anything more than you have to. So we use show columns. So when we generate this collection called cold files, it just has the two things we need. Perfect schmurfic, perfect schmurfic, is that a word? I don't know. Okay, so let's just delete that so it doesn't confuse me. And so then that's how the collection works. So that's probably where I spent the most amount of time is understanding how to write this collection as clean and tight as possible to send a little data. Then just one time we run the, uh, the flow that I named Power App Compose. Good job, Shane. And so what you're gonna do in that is you're going to send the collection over, but you're gonna send it over, uh, you have to encode it, so you JSON, your collection name, JSON format, and dent four, and that puts it into the format that Flow wants. So now we're good to jump to Flow. With Flow, I just have a regular Power Apps trigger. I have this Compose step here. This is not necessary, but I ended up using the Compose step to request the collection because when I did it the first time, I had to grab the data, right? So when I did my first run, here, let's just go backwards to the last run we did. So when I do the first run, I came in here to the compose and then where it says outputs, click to download, I copied all of this hot garbage. I used really small files so this hot garbage was as small as possible. But I copied all of that, like it still hasn't even loaded, there's so much there, please don't crash, shoo. And so then once I did that run, right, got that, then when I went to parse JSON, I copied that and I said generate from sample and I pasted the big wall of hot garbage, which I made as small as possible also, right? And so it automatically figured out that I was gonna pass it an array with objects, and there was gonna be a name column that was a string and a base 64 column as a string, and both were required. So 
um, power, auto, power Automate Flow, whatever we call this thing, it figured all that out itself by me doing the Compose step to get it. Technically speaking, I could delete the Compose step, but then I had asking power apps that are in there, it would have broke the flow, so I just left this here. It's kind of redundant, but it worked for me. Okay, so now that we've parsed the JSON, which so we've we took our table, our collection and power apps, turned it into JSON, right? Sent the JSON to Flow. Flow got the JSON and parsed it back into a table. It's just what you have to do. So that's how you get it in here. So now it's in Flow as a table or an array, if you want to use fancy words. So then we just looped through that array. So when we uploaded the six files, it ran through this six times. And then we did our normal create file in our document library. Name is just the name column. And then of course, for the file contents, we had to take the base 64, we had to do that base 64 to binary, which you learned in the first video, and that was how you did it. Boom, just like that, that's what you'd see, right? So if, like, if we go back over here again, just so you can see it. So with this one we ran, 12 minutes ago, I've been talking a long time. See, it ran six times, and so it just uploaded you know, Roger to bow tie, and then it uploaded whoever's next, I forget. Theo and Harley, right? It just worked its way through those uh, just as fast as it could. So that's it, folks. That is how you build so that your users can multi-upload and so that your users can drag and drop, right? All of that in one little video. Also keep in mind, right? Like if you're thinking about it, you're like, hey, Shane, I want to do offline like you said in the beginning, right? Remember, you've got this stuff in cold files. There you go, you've done it. You've got the data in the collection. Now you can save data that, you can load data that when you come back online, and then you can run the flow, right? Like this does, this because it uses a collection as a primary vehicle, this makes it really easy to adapt this to offline. And if you're wondering about offline, right, I've got a separate video for those. Um, you know, I've done offline apps before, so I know you get these questions. But that's it, folks. Hopefully, like I was like legit, like pumped up. I'm still pumped up, but hopefully you guys really enjoyed this, and hopefully this helps you guys, right? But this is this is kind of exciting. This is something people have asked me for for a long time, and we've kind of known some of the pieces, but I finally sat down, assembled them all, and then I tripped over the drag and drop, and I was like, so. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, leave them below. Always happy to answer those. Um, you know, remember you can go download the app at training.powerapps911, or you can sign up for any of my classes. I've got you know on-demand classes. We got all access passes. I got a live class coming up. Lots of ways to hang out with me. Who doesn't want to hang out with me, right? All right. Well, with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.